We Make Movies is recorded in front of a live audience in Los Angeles and is hosted by WeMakeMovies.org. Yeah. Hello, I'm your host, Amanda Lippert, and welcome to our very first podcast of How We Make Movies. This will be a series of discussions with filmmakers talking about the details of their personal journeys. But tonight, to kick off the very first podcast of the series, I thought it would be appropriate to bring in the founders of We Make Movies, The Collective. Without further ado, please welcome our guests and founders, Sam Messman, Tara Samuels, and Joe Leonard. So for our listeners out there who've never heard of the group, let me just read a quick description based on what I found on the website. We Make Movies is a Los Angeles-based film collective founded in the spring of 2009. The group hosts a monthly writer's workshop, improv workshop, and now a filmmaker's discussion panel, in addition to posting resources on their website and publicizing community events. All of their events are free. They've also held fundraisers to finance and screen projects chosen <laughs> through the community, and they're currently in the process of raising $10,000 for five new films. Wow, you guys have been busy. Yeah. We have. <laughs> well, <Our> team. Yeah. <laughs> well, to get started, why don't you tell us about yourselves, a little bit of backstory personally on each one of you. Uh, maybe Tara Ooh. can start. Um, tell us how, when did you decide to become a filmmaker and how did you get started? Wow, in 20 words or less. <laughs> no, Go. <laughs> take your time. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, well, hmm. I was interested in writing, I have a theater background, I'm from Toronto, Canada, I have a theater background and got interested in playwriting and then probably forgot all about it and went to New York with no money to waitress <laughs> and then came back to Canada and got my first job on a TV series where I was exposed to all of this wonderful world of lights, camera, action and had many heart attacks. Well after people said action, and then got excited about writing in the medium. So I started my first short film there in that world, writing, um, and it was about time travel. What's it called? It's called Find, and you can find it on the internet. <laughs> um, and uh, took that short film here to Los Angeles, and that's how I met people like Joe, uh, touring my first short film, and that's how I entered the world of filmmaking. Nice. Joe, what about you? How did you get started in filmmaking? Um, well, I grew up in St. Louis, and uh, I, I think I, I recently, somebody asked me this recently, and I think it was kind of just because I thought the girls in the theater program were pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's there's an honest an, answer. <laughs> there's an honest answer. Um, it's but true, I, it's true. But I was, I, I was interested in writing and photography and art and... Um, and I got interested in theater, but sort of realized quickly that I wasn't a very good actor. Um, but I liked being around actors, not just uh, the interesting female actors. And, <laughs> and so I, uh, I, I started making movies with just a, a video camera and VCRs, which is kind of what you had, I guess, back then. Back in the day. Back in the day. Like and, five uh, years ago? Yeah, five years. Yeah. Recent. Um, and I really liked it. So I, would, all the, I, you know, I was in plays, or I was working backstage in plays, and I would write, you know, parts for my friends, and we'd run around and try and shoot stuff. And was this while you were still in high school? Yeah, still while I was still in high school. Wow. So I was doing, you know, I did a couple of short films and uh, applied to uh, NYU and, and got in based on one of these little shorts, I guess. Oh, and, I can uh, see that. Yeah, it's it's classic. I think I acted in that one actually. Really? Can we get it? On it was the about interweb? me. It was about me. Um, I worked at a tennis tennis court, like at the shack at the tennis court, where just no one comes except for <laughs> a couple of people. So it was uh, deep thoughts at the tennis court, kind of. Um, Can we find it online? No, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll look for it. I'll post it as part copy. of this. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah that would be, be great. Five ninety nine. What's on, the title? Uh, <laughs> What's the title? Uh, it was called "Defeating the Windmills." <laughs> 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 this is so embarrassing. So terrible. <laughs> <comedy? laughs> Catchy. My phones oh, are always Was it a comedy or a thriller? I'm sorry, but uh, mine's like. <laughs> but basically, uh, basically, uh, I, I so I was, did, did that and ended up going to NYU. <laughs> Let me quickly try and gloss over that stage of my life. But I um, <laughs> went to NYU to study film, um, where I met Sam. Sam and I were on, in the same freshman dorm at NYU. And uh, awesome. 
So we spent the next four years or so working on uh, movies together. Uh, we had a bunch of different classes together. And, and you were studying filmmaking at this point, not acting. Yeah, studying okay. filmmaking, yeah. And still chasing actresses. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, um, and we, we you know, were dreaming these big projects. So we actually had a, a sort of a, a We Make Movies light that we uh, created back then. Yeah. That was like a little mini film collect film crew, basically, mm -hmm. called Blatantly Subtle Productions, and uh, and it was we would meet once a week, or I think it was once a week, but we would meet so once we a week met and periodically, and and and, uh, and, and we would stuff? and we would yeah we would make short films, and uh, it was it was a great experience because it kind of kept us all um, focused on what we wanted to do, oh. so yeah, and then I came out here after that, but I. You know, that wasn't how I got started. Well, we'll get, we'll get to that we'll in a second. There. What about you, Sam? How did you get started before you met Joe? Um, I guess, how did I get started? Uh, I guess I started just, I used to watch way too much TV and um, <laughs> movies as a child and um, spent a lot of time in front of the television. So I guess that was, that was my, that was probably more useful than film school, I think, in a lot of ways. Yes. Um, yeah, and then you don't uh, have to go to film school. You don't. You don't. It's, you don't have to whisper. You don't. You shouldn't go to film school. Don't go to film school or theater school. It's a Just kidding. Yeah. Theater school. I hope someone Friends. at NYU watches this. Um, You're gonna and, get a call from the alumni association. Right? Yeah, probably asking me for money. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I. Um, so actually, I I didn't ever think I w wanted to make movies or anything until. Um, my dad happened to send me to this uh, TV, radio TV film program at Northwestern, and I got weirdly into it. I thought I was gonna do business or something, and, and that didn't quite, and then I, I did that, yeah. and the next thing I knew, um, I was in the TV station at where I worked, all, or at, uh, at school all the time in high school, and I didn't really go to class. I kind of set it up where I was just in the TV studio all the time, and. Um, just awesome. edited stuff, and uh, then um, they somehow let me into NYU, and um, that was fun. And <laughs> but uh, basically, it's it's just you know um, started making projects. That was the only thing that I think I ever got into, um, in the sense that uh, I wasn't really into class or any of the other stuff. I just kind of liked class. making my projects. So. <laughs> Um, you know, and then uh, and then we got done, and we started the blatantly subtle days while I was a waiter at Applebee's. That was my first job <laughs> out of college. My, uh, you might have been waitering at the same time. I don't yeah, know. I bet were you, you we were. Times were you in Were <laughs> no, you in Times Square? Where were you? Different Chelsea. You were in Chelsea. You had a much nicer restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> the guy was insane, though. Anyway, that's every restaurant. So you guys, Joe and Sam, you met at NYU and started blatantly subtle productions. Mm -hmm. um, how did you decide to come out to LA? At what uh, point did that happen? That actually happened, I think, when we were trying to do the movie. So basically, we graduated from school and were struggling in New York to kind of make movies and uh, working at Applebee's. Uh, yeah. I had a job at the Criterion Collection wa where I watched movies. I, I made like awesome. $10 an hour, but all I had to do was um, watch movies kind of at all hours of the day. Were you I mean, responsible for cleaning up all the French New Wave films that I rent from Netflix I did now? Do, I did do that. <laughs> I, I did a lot of, they, they have a thing called frame by frame. It's like a computer program. Um, but basically you go through and you draw boxes over dust specs. Oh, like wow. so every little freaking dust speck on the old things uh -oh. and the computer looks at the frame before and frame after. Anyway, I did wow. that as well. Wow. That was less fun. <laughs> but, uh, but more fun um, than waiting. Yes. No, I, I, yeah, I'm not maybe. really complaining. It was a good experience. Um, but so we were living in New York and uh, the, uh, the, the weirdest combination of things happened actually. But I, I got a job offer in LA yeah. from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you did? And, and and so I had to leave New York. I'll come back to that. But I, First, how I did had you to leave Arnold Schwarzenegger. Give me a sec. But uh, so I, I this had is great. to. I'm getting to I, know I these guys. I had to leave. I had to. I'm sorry, by the way. Um, but uh, <laughs> about which part? I don't know. Okay. But uh, I so I had to leave New York in like two or three months, and so we decided to throw a bunch of money into doing short films based on the feature scripts that we had been working on together. That's um, smart. 
for, a, for blatantly subtle productions. So Sam had one called Sellout, which he's actually been developing at the, sh at the workshop again recently. Mm -hmm. and a feature-length version yeah. that we made movie. And I had one called How I Got Lost, which we ended up making. And I think there might have been a couple others that we did. But we, we you know, basically spent 10 grand on yeah, a grind free each on a couple yeah. of projects. And, uh, and then I came out to LA, and I had this job editing political ads. It was a horrible, like, like, Oh my I, God, that's I actually shouldn't say it was horrible because it was it got me to LA and you know I whatever it was an interesting experience put it that way but I was cutting political commercials for Arnold Schwarzenegger wow. during the recall campaign. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> wow. total that's recall. Yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I wanted to say it and then it? I let you say it. Total like, recall. Total <laughs> recall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so I, I had a close encounter. I hung out with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. And, and then I was in LA. And Did he hit on you at any point? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask the same joke. Good question. I Good question. Uh, you know, I don't have any domestic experience, so I don't think he... Right. Also, I'm a naturalized citizen of the United States. Oh, oh okay. Um, so you weren't at risk. Both low, bro yeah. low blows. Yeah. I'm sorry, Arnold. Yeah. But, um, uh, but yeah, so he may not what then anything. happened was yeah. I was in L.A. and <laughs> Sam was in New York. And that was, oh, I wow. think, the period where I met Tara. And I was out here trying to work as an editor. And I was also trying to get How I Got Lost made into a feature still. Mm -hmm. So I was going around to meetings and everyone was we telling me that I didn't right. like it. They, you know, that they thought I should change it or it should be a TV show or something. Oh and uh, so I was kind of like discouraged, but I kept doing rewrites and uh, I, I ended- you received your award by at no, that point? No, no, yeah. So okay. at that point I was out in LA and I found out that NYU had a grant. And mm -hmm. so it seemed like a great thing. It's for uh, uh, alumni to make their first feature film, $100,000. So I was like, this sounds great. Yeah. So I applied and wrote you know, a kind of ridiculous proposal and showed up. I'd fly out to New York and pitch it. This and guy. Oh. Yeah, how I got lost. Yeah. And Did you have to go? No, no I didn't okay. go. Sorry, sorry. But, uh, but yeah, so I pitched it and, and didn't get it, actually, and sort of went back and thought about it for a year and worked in more, I did more editing. and and reapplied for the same, with the same movie to the same grant, kind of taking the lessons from who won and why I thought they won, and, mm -hmm. and, and kind of finding new people to get involved. I'd found new producers to kind of back me up mm -hmm. that, that, were, that had some street cred or whatever. <laughs> and uh, I found Smart. some good crew, and I made a couple of shorts to, to like develop some crew, and then went back to New York and got the grant. Great. So, which was unbelievable. It was awesome. like a really, oh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty unbelievable experience because... From the time that you started writing it to the time that you got the grant, how long was that period? Well, I wrote the script. The first draft of the script was written in like 2003. Okay, so, so right and this out of was college? Like, this was like 2006 or 2007. So you'd been so working been, on it that whole time. And I really just never, like, it never even occurred to me to like set it aside. Like, it was just one of those things where I, I kind of was so singularly like... How you do um, it. Yeah, so I, I just was completely uh, <laughs> focused on it, even though there was no real rational reason for me to be. <laughs> and at this point, you were in LA, coming back and forth between New York, and was Sam? Were you in LA yet? No, I was still in New York. Um, I was directing this documentary for this millionaire. Um, <laughs> Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger. Probably, Arnold. <laughs> Arnold. Probably. Sh I don't know You're how much I should. You know what? I, okay. Yeah. I want to leave it at that. And um, it turned out really well. And um, <laughs> the way you said "well," I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> um, we're leaving it at that. <laughs> it actually it did turn out well. Um, it well, just, you were producing and editing it, right? So uh, it was like it was like an interesting. It was your baby. Yeah. And then uh, it just went on forever, and then you had to leave it. Well, no, it, it, it finished, and it um, finished. Some, I guess all I'll say about it is sometimes when, um, if something seems like it's too good to be true, it probably is, and that was one of those situations. Oh, so, and that I was, was, your, was that your first professional well, gig, it's film related outside of college? It's funny, I, um, I remember I, I'd been... <laughs> you quit Applebee's, right? No, I got fired. Oh. Um, <laughs> 
So you're <laughs> done so with typical. Applebee's. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I got, and, then you, and then you were just editing pretty much full time. I got fired at Applebee's and, and for writing on napkins, actually. And oh, oh you wrote messages like fortune cookies? Like on the, when the you were script, rolling? Scripts. Were you, yeah. you were writing scripts on napkins no. and then got you fired? Did you write? Did you know how you get a roll of silverware up at the end of the night? Yeah. And so you. You know, I'd been there. I was. I'd probably been there too long. And if you're there for more than six, eight months, like you just, they probably should fire you. And um, so it was my time. And um, anyway, uh, we at the end of the night, you you roll silverware. So one night, a couple. Oh I don't know what. This has nothing to do with film. I, I <laughs> but now you have to finish. But so. it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so you know. You roll up silverware, and that's the silverware that you get the next day. That it goes in a giant bin, and you, so at the end of the night, we had a pen out one night, and we just started writing little messages to customers um, that oh they would God. get when they opened up. So like yeah, one of them, so one of them was uh, there's a hundred dollars under your table. Go find it. Like, <laughs> Um, oh my God, that's awesome! You're our one millionth customer. Ask your server for your prize, and that was the one that got me fired. <laughs> so um, they're they're really psyched. They well, won. No, perfect. someone asked for their prize. All right, so <laughs> that's awesome. so they're like, "Where's Ed McMahon?" So they had this yeah. giant meeting um, the next day, like, cause and they asked, they asked who did it? for a prize, and they had to comp the guy's lunch. Oh, so, that's great. So they had this. Is that uh, in your script? It's really no, good. No, <laughs> you should do that in one of yeah. your scripts. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, they didn't actually c catch me, but a couple weeks later, I was fired without a really good reason. So I think they put two and two together. Yeah. Um, like, that's worth it. Who though. would do this? It looks like left handed handwriting. Yeah. yeah, they did. <laughs> and it was Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, totally worth it. so let's fast forward a little bit. Um, how did eventually the three of you get in the same room? Well, what happened was... Snake pit. I mean, no, 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 well, <laughs> yes, but we met at your film festival through I another mutual friend. At like, Temecula? Yeah, Temecula Film Festival right? through Ishai, Ishai Seton, Seton. Who had a, f a friend of mine had a film showing at the same festival as Tara. The Big Bad Swim. The mm -hmm. Big Bad Swim showing at the same festival as, as Tara's film, My short film that I mentioned, Find. Yes. And, and we, that was we, playing in LA or New York? Uh, it, was it was in out in California. Temecula. South, South, okay. like, the Temecula uh, Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you guys all Close were by. at this film festival for yeah. different reasons. That's how Tara and I met and then um, Tara would have these amazing Christmas parties and get-togethers, like um, every Christmas, I think. I, Maybe every uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, and birthdays. All the time. It was birthdays. <laughs> like, Tara was, you know, basically would organize events with interesting film people, and I would get invited. And then I was my looking buddies, for friends. I, was, I, yeah. I needed friends. And yeah. That's a great way to you just make friends people. just throw parties. Yeah, and yeah. just tell them where the beer is. And yeah. And, <laughs> and so we had we had actually just made How I Got Lost, the the whole feature version. Um, and Sam was living in LA. We were living together and editing the movie together. Um, living together and editing together. It was like it was that an intense time period. Um, <laughs> but it, but actually uh, it was it was productive and interesting. But uh, but. In any case, uh, we went to one of your, to the Snake Pit, and to your Sam. Christmas yeah, party, was, and I brought that Sam. That was my second day in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam had like, just I'd landed. I literally just packed all my stuff into uh, a car and uh, driven out here with uh, all the edit gear. We set up shop, and then um, the next day it was like, hey, you should go check out this filmmaking thing. And I think, um, I was like, that was at the time when I was, you know, you show up to LA and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go meet people. And then, so that was, that was one of those. And, and then before fortunately- you Before you stop, <laughs> don't leave your house. Yeah, yeah you know. Um, so day, day two, day two. But uh, it actually, randomly, we, we met you that night yeah. and then, uh, did I, t I th that, that night was... you were like, I have a script. And I was like, I'll help you. Uh, like, <laughs> that's how it happened. And, and then yeah. somehow you guys the got together. The theme of We Make Movies. Yeah, you guys got together and had the, the I don't know. Or, well, uh, really, what it, I think what reading? it comes down to is yeah. out here, um, there isn't, like, you know, if, I think the three of us have all spent a bunch of time in New York, and there's a different vibe out there in the sense, and there's a, there's a uh, group that, you know, um, really helped us out with some of the stuff, with stage readings, with some of our projects called The Collective out in New York. Hey guys, if uh, you're listening, but um, that was your group, no, the collective. It wasn't my group, no. Okay. It was, uh, it was no, it was this another guy, Kevin Kane, who was in the short film version of How I Got Lost. Okay. Um, it was like a East had, Coast yeah. make movies. Yeah, it's like an East Coast, more theater centric, 
um, we make movies, okay. basically. Yeah, and they, uh, they do films too. And they yeah. did a weekly. They had a weekly workshop, and like they br let us bring some of our scripts through there, and it was really useful to get the feedback and get a sense of like what was working and what wasn't. And I really liked the concept and. We brought How I Got Lost through there, actually. Yeah, oh, How I Got Lost while we were in yeah. pre-production. While we were in pre-production in New York, that's right. And um, that's how we know Aubrey. Aubrey's over there. Shout out yeah. to Aubrey. Yes. Ah, <laughs> nice to meet you. You were there. And um, <laughs> and you. <laughs> so <laughs> all of you. Um, so yeah, we brought we brought that through. Then that was like kind of the the concept of like uh, I felt like I actually owed those guys a bunch, and I was like, well, we should do something like that out here. And um, so I met with Tara, and then we did a, a stage workshop of my screenplay. I think a couple months later, I don't even. What was like, the name of your screenplay? Um, eighty six. Eighty six. Did you do the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We had we held so a meeting. So that was the kickoff. That's cool. And it was cool. before we make movies existed, but it yeah. was like exactly what we do. We held a big fat reading and invited all of our friends and served snacks and beverages and yeah. read his script. Yeah. So that was unofficially the first we make movies kinda. meeting ever. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Even though it we didn't it, dive back into it, just, it probably for like another six, oh, right. eight months. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're right. But born definitely from uh, alcohol, um, <laughs> a passion for films. Yep. And anger at not ha getting to creatively express ourselves. And love. And love. <laughs> and love. That's Tara. Yeah. And these guys too, you know, they won't admit it. Um, so um, after doing that first reading, like what, what spawned the idea of creating a group? And, and like really drove that home and, and got you guys really going with it. Well, actually, I remember when it actually happened is uh, we were doing color correction for How I Got Lost. No, it was, I was out at some, I was editing something, How I Got Lost, and, and I was talking to you on the phone. I remember when it happened. And uh, basically, uh, for those of you out there, you may or may not be aware of um, the current distribution situation for independent film and it's really not very good. Um, it's just challenging. Yeah, it's challenging. Um, <laughs> Always the positive one. <laughs> it's, I'm Canadian. It's it, <laughs> so reasonable. Why are you laughing that It's so hard. reasonable and level-headed. And <laughs> it's it's challenging, it and you know what you find. And for me, like I, I definitely found this is like you can you go out and you make this movie. You put everything you have into making um, a feature, and you know at the end of the day, it's done. And then you realize, now what? You know, so you go to these film festivals and like you go and screen and, but really it's a lot of times it's diminishing returns um, in the sense of like, you can just go around, but you don't really build anything. I mean, the whole mm -hmm. concept, like no one's going to these festivals in the sense of industry or any of that stuff. It's not really happening. Like, you know, it's kind of a joke. And, sorry. Festivals. But, um, <laughs> But the so we had we had finished this movie. Not to get you off point, but like we had finished this movie and we were really struggling to get it out there. Like and you know getting the rejections from Sundance and from Tribeca and from so this is we're actually in the same exact, boat with ours too. Yeah, we're yeah. like behind these guys. Yeah. So, so um, exactly when we uh, we make movies was starting was like when we were kind of like oh shit our movie's not gonna kind of get over the hump. So, so to speak, and we were trying to figure out what our next project would be, and well, and on top of that, the bigger picture really is. It's like you know, at the end of the day, when you like the big kind of I guess epiphany, sort of for me at least, was that um, no one cares about your movie. They don't care, <laughs> you know, and that's and they shouldn't really, <laughs> you so, know. That's the way it feels like an, as an actor a lot of times too. Like you're just one in a million. Well, yeah. like the in big, LA, like yeah. you are, you're just one in you yes. know million talented, beautiful, wonderful that's why, people. That's why you have to start a film collective. And <laughs> get yourself some parts. <laughs> or you kill the, yourself. But, I need some wine. Don't yeah, kill yourself. <laughs> Somebody get this guy some wine. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's it's not like it's it's true in the sense, but it's also you know not necessarily a bad thing. Like the the reality is the, the good thing. Here's the good thing. I'm getting yeah. to that. Yeah. Wait, wait for your note cards. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. I mean, but the the so the big takeaway is it's like okay, so you have a movie that you like and you're happy with, and realistically you think it should be able to be getting out there, but then. Um, the question is, how do you get 
people outside of your network interested? How do you connect with other people? Because in this town, at the very least, it's always about what your project is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's always about like, okay, I'm doing this and I'm doing this. But if everyone's always focused on their own project, then how can you ever build a larger audience around your individual project if you're not paramount, if you're not universal, or some of these other things that just have millions of dollars to throw at the rest of the country? And the only really way to do that is to start interacting and working with other people and trying to help other people get their help, projects going. Help each other. So ah. well, it's like in the, in the the concept is also sort of that. It's, it's, oh my gosh, nice. this, this is so cool. Hot dog. Um, Can I have some apple juice uh, too? Yeah. <laughs> apple juice, please. Apple juice. <laughs> apple juice. Can Why? I have a car? No, I'll take red, actually, grape juice. That's great. But the concept is also that, you know, wow. by, by one, one film's success, hopefully leading to the next film's success, totally, one, that's one the filmmaker's plan. success, one actor's success, helping to build the word around, like kind of compounding it. So, so that we're not all just like sort of forced to fight this uh, battle that's like, uh, you know, sort of a little bit overwhelming and we're, you're just like the small guy and how are you ever gonna win? It's a little bit more like, oh, we're gonna get all of our friends who are super talented together and, and we're all gonna make interesting stuff and people are gonna suddenly not just be talking about us, Joe, Sam, Tara, but also be talking about, you know, the group and about what the other projects are that might come out of it or whatever. So mm -hmm, totally. uh, in a way to maximize publicity, it's like just pooling some resources. So yeah. then the yeah. ultimate then mission was strength in numbers. Well, the weirdest Darn thing. Darn tootin'. The, yeah, that was the <laughs> right? philosophy for sure. Oh, that was yeah. the thinking. But the weirdest thing happened, it, ha it developed basically organically. Yeah. Because basically from, we all agreed about the state of affairs of independent film or whatever, mm -hmm. and yeah. our, we had common frustrations. But the concept of having a meeting where you read fresh work was sort of like an accident. We sort of started reading work, we read 86, and then it was like, this is gonna be a cool thing. And then we were surprised when people showed up at the first space, which had 20 seats in it. Wow. And it was the like, Lex, but it was yeah, the Lex. The Lex. The Lex. Yeah. There, but the there Lex. were literally and 20 you, seats and people were like standing behind. It was so great. And do you and, remember sitting around my living room before we had that? Yeah. Like just, I don't even know why we met, but yeah. we would meet in my living room. Yeah, we yeah. We used to meet yeah. like we often. We did all the time. And yeah. we had no goal or plan. <laughs> we but just we talked. kept meeting. And then I remember, do you guys remember talking about how, what we're going to name the group? Yeah. yeah. And laughing our asses off and coming up with a logo and farting around on, like with clip art and yeah. trying to figure out like what were we called and what was the point and what we were doing. But, but the whole thing was basically it was like. Our, very we organic. Were, we were kind of just That's accidentally awesome. like. <laughs> You know, oh, and part oh. of it's... I really wanted white wine. Oh, Amanda, would you like any of that? I love that. <laughs> you, you tried to make her apple juice. I love Chris. That are is you apple serious? juice. Chris, this is... Chris, this is the many that are listening to this. This is, this is our, our event coordinator. This, this he, was, is, uh, he was improvising. This is my apple juice that Chris that was made improv. for me. And uh, Chris is a brilliant actor and a brilliant uh, improv night leader and probably and writer And an engineer. Filmmaker. Apple juice engineer. engineer. <laughs> so everyone should hire Chris. Thanks, dude. Christopher Fredericks, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thank you, but, Chris. But yes, he, um, <laughs> but yeah, sure. end of the day, like I think the amazing thing about it awesome. was really that it, it kind of took on a life of its own, even from like the first thing. So it's and not we like were you always guys surprised. planned to do it. Like it just was happening. Yeah, it was totally organic. Well, and it was, it was like, we have these things we want to read, and so we need to cast them. And ter you know, Sam and I didn't really know in many actors anyway. And so, and Tara knew a bunch of people, and everyone Tara spoke to about it was enthused about it, of course, because Tara's awesome and amazing, oh. and you paid them. <laughs> uh -huh. But so, so everyone kind of came into it with energy, and it just sort of caught on, and uh -huh. it very quickly went from a 20-person group to a 50-person group, and then and after a little while, it went to like what it is now, which is like more of a 50, more of a 100-person 
whatever. Like you, we'll, you guys have a mailing list of over 600 people yeah. and an average of wow. 80 to 100 people that show up at every single meeting. And wow. the meeting started off, I've been keeping tabs by the way. Thank you. The, the meeting started off as once a month and now they're every week and people are still showing up every week. It's surprising still. Yeah. And, but it was, We're still it was amazed. definitely surprising then. Thank you yeah. for those like, facts. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> what, um, what do you feel um, makes this group different than the other groups that you were part of? Um, the collective and blatantly Nudity. simple. No, sorry. <laughs> um, what, I, what differentiates you from from the other groups that inspired you? I, I mean, I, I, I think that just the the spirit of the peop, uh, of the people who are involved and come every time. Like, I, I think the fact that it has a life of its own is what's pretty unique about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot. I don't know. That's for me. What What do you guys think? Well, um, I mean, I'm hoping that we stay this way, but the. Uh, and I think we will. I mean, and really like, you know, I think initially when we started this, you know, the idea was like, okay, yeah, we, it was about sort of the end result, you know, which is like, well, if we kind of get all together, like, and we can start getting our stuff out there. But I think pretty quickly, it just turned into, well, let's just go make some cool stuff, you know, and like, let's figure out a way to do it. And that's really been kind of the driving principle. It's because in this town, you know, when you get paid to go do stuff, you are, or, or if someone's giving you money to go do stuff, you are always at someone's mercy in terms of how you're making, you know, your content. Like there is, the second you take that money, um, they pretty much can tell you what decisions you need to make, you know, for your content. So if you get a studio deal, or if you do some of these other things, you you find pretty quickly, or even you know if you're working, and um, in any particular capacity, like everyone I think moves out here to uh, make stuff that they care about. I mean, there's better ways to make money. You know, there's mm -hmm. better ways to... Um, I wish I was good at those ways. Yeah. <laughs> like, Can I add something? You're getting there. Can I, yeah, please, please. Can I jump into? Yeah, go ahead. Just to add that, yeah. uh, that one a really key ingredient to we make movies, uh, talking to people or camera? Everybody. The key ingredient that I get really get behind at we make movies is that there is all are welcome and all ideas are welcome and all approaches are welcome mm -hmm. and who are we to ever impose standards or taste or judgment of any kind mm -hmm. so really there's a there's a vibe and a feeling of uh, fall on your face because it's fun and yeah. try anything as because a writer all, or as, an as a actor? writer as an actor as a director producer and because we're, we're all learning and no matter what level you're at you're still you're gonna learn for the rest of your life and into the next dimension but my point is, is that it's there's a feeling that is uh, allows for your whole self to express yourself, and and no one has to be afraid or nervous or feel weird when they come. And and it's so fun for us, like kind of having started this thing to have, you know, now people like yourself who are kind of taking the initiative, making the films, like our new going, PR person, put, doing Lippert. PR, yeah. also you know, or Chris actor. Frederick, the, you know, making apple juice and, and doing uh -huh. that and doing yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the improv night. I mean, it's, it's Coming really, out of the woodworks. It's, Everybody. it's very you, cool that, um, Chad and Denny shooting. Oh my God. Yeah. Really everybody here. that's part of this. Yeah. Chad, the genius web mega person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, I mean, but I, I think it all came out of us like sort of, wanting to make these type of films and just sort of going for it. And I think it's nice that other people are inspired by what we're doing as well and also going for it. Like, if we can be a launching platform, mm -hmm. that's super exciting. I think that's different than the other groups that I've been involved in. It, that was all the, always the idea, mm -hmm. but it was always like my project I wanna launch. Now it's like I want other people's projects to launch, which is well, cool. Everybody's, yeah. I still want mine to launch. Yeah, I want mine. You know, and <laughs> Mine's well, first. And the difference yeah, is. But I want yours to go first. And <laughs> the other difference is you've got a lot of other people that want yours to launch as well. Right, right. Yeah. Um, as, as filmmakers, this is always really curious to me, because you mentioned before how there are other ways to make money in the industry, but it's not always the most satisfying. As filmmakers, how important is it for you to maintain the rights to your films and have it made your way? Um, in other words, uh, would you be just as happy to sell the script to someone else and just keep the money? Or is it really important for you to, to make it and to be a part of it from start to finish? Well, I guess uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll start with that one. For me, um, I guess I, I'm sort of schizophrenic in the sense that like, um, 
I need to know if it's a money job or if I care, you know? And if I care, then no one's really gonna get to tell me how I need to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I'm being paid, you know, I will do whatever they need to say and I will literally divorce my like creative um, spirit <laughs> spirit from the work. It's just work, Your you know? Soul. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like pay me. This are, you, are you seeing someone about this? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, it's just, it keeps it in perspective, you know, because I don't, I will sit there. I, I will everyone do, relates. I yeah. will do any sort of notes that anyone gives me. I will gladly like, you know, I'm an editor and a still, colorist. And still kind of a survival job. I'll do, right. um, I will right. do my best on the work and I will like, I will try and make it as good as I can, but I won't try and make it mine. And then, and here, you know, with, with We Make Movies at the very least is like, this is where, you know, I get to do what I want to do and why I got into this business is, is what we do here. And the rest of it is just, you know, a paycheck. Yeah. Um, Everybody's um, got to pay the bills. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, my experience is now, right now, uh, what I love about We Make Movies for me, because I, I'm cutting on Glee, and this is, so, which is a big, fun show and a great experience. But I, I am doing exact, I, you know, I try not to think of it as careful I'm divorcing job. my creative. <laughs> careful, careful. Divorcing careful. my creative uh, soul <laughs> from my work or whatever. But it's a big job. And so it's pretty fun to, um, it, it, what's, what's amazing about We Make Movies is that it is about generating your own content and about what you want to do. And I think it's super important to keep control over, over your work. And you, it basically, there's a sliding scale where if you want to make you know, a, a 20 or $30 million movie, then you're going to have to come to terms with, with ev like even if you're making a $300,000 movie, mm -hmm. like we did for How I Got Lost, um, which was $400,000. But if, even when you're doing that, you have to you know, do your best to make a movie that will sell. Mm -hmm. You have to do your best to make the, the investors back their money. You still have a responsibility that like, isn't, it's not just make your art. It's, you, you're, you're already dabbling in the world of, of, of trying to make something that will sell. That, that, so I think that you, it's, it's a hard question. I mean, it just depends on your goal, right? Yeah. I mean, if you don't care and you just need a paycheck, then yeah. maybe you let someone take over your project. Or maybe, I mean, you guys all know this uh, uh, to some degree. Yeah, I think it's important for anyone to like have their thing, though. That's their dream project yeah, and agree. to protect that. Mm -hmm. And like for that, yeah. for me, that was how I got lost. And, and you know, Ruby Booby seems very it's much totally like that. totally an example of that. So, I mean, you, I think it's important to have that script that you wouldn't sell, that you wouldn't make into a TV show, that you would never change or let any, like, anyone touch, you know, because it's that important to you. But then I think you also have to, if you play the game a bit, like in... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you could sell a script and a script and make be cool. fifty grand or hundred yeah. grand, well, you I want to do that. Script. And I also that <laughs> personally, I think there's a there's a way to do both. You yeah, know? and that's kind of the. I agree. Um, I think there's a way to make money making good things, um, and that I think is you know, if you, I think the key is really like you have to find a way to get it into the world in the right way and get the right people to see it. Because if it's important to you, it's probably going to be somewhat important to someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the big mistake a That's lot right. of people make in this industry is they're trying to make something that they think other people will That's like. Yeah. And I think that's why most projects are failures. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's like your best asset is kind of your original ideas and, and just really nurturing them. So that's why I, for me, I hope I we make movies is a great that's sounding board to everyone. do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's for everyone to kind of find their thing and what they do with it is really up to them. But like for in our space, it, it, it's like all about hopefully the project just being the best it can be. It's not about is it going to sell. Mm -hmm. It's not about any of that stuff. It's mm -hmm. about what is this wanting to say mm -hmm. and is it working. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, we've got a, only a couple minutes left before we start taking questions from the audience. Um, so, for people listening that maybe aren't in the Los Angeles area but are thinking about moving to LA, what advice would you give to filmmakers that are just out there, maybe in LA or not in LA? What just general advice would you give to someone starting out? I don't 
This is a good one. Well, go for it. Um, I want to be second. Okay, you want to be second? All right. Uh, stay, I love this question. just keep doing it. Make yourself better. You know, like get good at what you want to do, and the work will, will gradually follow because it, it's hard to find good people. You know, it's like, so if, you know, whatever job you take, just try and do your best on it and try and learn and get better and always keep an eye out on why you wanted to do it in the first place. And then... it's good advice. Me, me, Tara. <laughs> I agree with Sam. And can I add to that? No, don't even think about good. Just go do what's in your head. So really... You can think about good sometimes. Yeah, but good, but good, good is in there. You, you, it's implied because you want to do your best. I, I, I know what you're saying, like get good. No, I know but I'm also saying yeah. go do because people get stuck. At, yeah. All of no, you, me true. included, yeah. waiting to be good and waiting to be ready and waiting for your script to be whatever it is and get just the right person, just the right amount of money. F that and go do it because you're gonna get good. Just, yeah. So I know and by you're doing, saying that you'll get better. We're saying the same yeah. thing, but mm -hmm. I had to add the flip Sorry. side of the coin. You're right. Yeah. 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 There's a great quote like, uh, "The perfect is the enemy of the good." Yeah. And that's sort yeah. of the thing is like you get caught on the thing being wanting to be perfect. And we all and do that. And you just want to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think it's also the only other thing I'd add is just don't ask for permission to make yeah. your movie or whatever. You don't have to. Um, like ask bas for basic forgiveness? Yeah. Forgiveness yeah. Better Thank to you. ask. Say it again. Say that again. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Better to ask for yes. forgiveness than permission. That's there a good one. Go. Courtesy of Bree. We can't Bree. see you back there. Yeah. Thank you, Bree. The great I, actor, writer, director, producer. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, but it's this it's not even it's and and that's you know, the concept I think is just you you there's a mental thing that happens, especially when you're getting into the industry where it's thinking, oh, I need to uh, do it. I, I need to figure out who's in charge and show them like my, my masterpiece. Ultimately, and then they're going to charge. say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's at some point going to say yes, mm -hmm. you have it. You are the one. I've been looking for you and waiting for you my entire life. <laughs> that's not going to happen. And I'm saying that's not going to happen. No, I'm saying... <laughs> now stop you, making you're, the project the, you want to make and make That person who's going to do that has to be you. Like, you yeah. have to be the one who are like, you know, I'm making this amazing project. So and, if this were a rom-com, I am my own Prince Charming. Yes. 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 Nicely put. There you go. All right. yes. Yes. So I, everything that you're saying... Except was, I would say if someone's paying you, <laughs> do what they want you to do. Of course. Like, <laughs> if they're paying forget, you to be Prince Charming? Yeah, or? exactly. <laughs> like if they're paying you, it's a very different story. Just like throw, throw all that other stuff out the window. <laughs> Work, make money, support yourself. Uh, all, all of this yeah. um, stuff that you're saying is reminding me so much of your latest. Um, oh, you have wine. The, thank you. Yeah, I've got wine. <laughs> the, all, all of this that you're saying is um, bringing it kind of to a head and reminding of me of your latest inspirational campaign where your tagline is make your movie. Oh. And, and I, I think that really just sums up everything Fantastic. you just said. And on that note, for our last question, before we start taking questions from the audience, what's next for We Make Movies? I know you just launched an inspirational commercial campaign. Um, you just, you know, just for the sake of getting it out there and inspiring other people, which is so much, you know, of your personality and, and what you guys do already. But what's next for We Make Movies? What can we expect from you? The, 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 mm, uh, mm, mm. Business plan, i.e., want to develop ways to produce on a larger scale eventually down the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess to flesh that out a little bit, first off, just to keep doing what we're doing, because, I mean, honestly, this is fun. Like, I enjoy this. I don't enjoy most of my jobs. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> none of them are watching anyway. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, the. Um, and then on, on top of it, you know, longer term is what we want to do is find a way to um, take the movies that we like and collectively get them out there as one community as opposed to each individual trying to reinvent the wheel every time they have a project. Um, you know, why not just try and plug into a community? I mean, I met so many people that I like to work with and actors I really like just by coming through this workshop like I have a blast every time I do a We Make Movies project and it's su such a big difference when I do one of those compared to when I do one of the other ones and I think there's a reason for that and mm -hmm. for me like I want to figure out a way to 
um, get paid to do that and get other people paid to do that. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is the goal. That is the goal for We Make Movies. So yeah. The, the, yeah, I mean, longer term, we want to get big enough where we have a large enough audience where everyone who's involved can get paid to do what they love to do. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I think, I think the Kickstarter campaigns are like a preview for what we'd love to do. Like on a larger scale, we'd like to be in a position where we're developing great work and people are coming to us asking about it and we're essentially setting up projects that, that could be bigger projects, that could be feature projects. And so we're, we're funding five short films in this Kickstarter campaign. But next year, or six months from now, or two years from now, or who knows when, you know, hopefully we'll have those, you know, five or six amazing features that that we can at that point, we'll have gotten some stuff out. We'll we'll have a way to put stuff through on the interwebs. We'll have ways <laughs> we'll have people knowing the work we're doing, and and hopefully just continuing to build that audience, continue to build our work and get it out there. But more than anything else, just keep making movies, you know? That's fantastic. And if I may add very briefly on the largest, largest scale, contribute to the overall movie making mentality and model of the world, actually, and really contribute cinematically. Truly, that's what we want, because we want to bring power to our artistic voices. It's really what's fueling this whole machine that is everyone in this room and everyone in the cyberspaces. Yeah. Right. Excellent. It's really yeah. fantastic. Well said. All right, so our first question from the audience comes from uh, Twitter, um, at Brendan Weinhold asks... Brendan! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves Brendan. Um, so he asks, is there a We Make Movies production team? Everybody in this room? <laughs> Just look in the cyberspaces? Um, well... Yeah. Yes. I mean, I guess the question would be in what, in, we have actually, there's multiple layers of it. I mean, we have so many talented crew and so many talented actors that are all like, we pretty much have a go-to list for every single crew capacity that, you know, we can pretty much dig into. And then on top of that, we have the people who are kind of running it, who are not just the three of us, by the way. Um, we only had three people for the stage, but, you know. Three chairs. Yeah. We have. It was, this was for the founders. This is for the yeah. Founders. Yeah, the group has the core group. Has but there grown. is a much larger Way core group now. now. There is including Miss Amanda here. Miss Amanda. There is and Chad. And John Sandel. There Sandal is John there. Sandal. There is Jen Flax on social media. There yes, is Chris and Frederick and Alan O'Connor doing casting, which is, which is amazing. Yeah. But anyway, you get the idea. Production-wise, that one thing that we aren't is we aren't essentially, we're connecting people but we aren't essentially a production company like right. we're making movies but we aren't set up at the moment like fully as a production Not company yet. where where we have that kind of a team so every project is approached um, at, you have to fund a crew you know you, yeah. or you have to convince people that they should that they should work for free for you and so it's up to each filmmaker and each producer Basically, to find and and we we will we help with that like actively like we will say, what do you need? Like you want to make your movie, you need a camera person, you need an editor, you need a camera, whatever. Like we'll we'll do everything we can us and, and any of the people involved. Um, but you have to have a, a, some kind of a budget to make a movie. You yes. you can't right necessarily now, yeah. make a movie on your iPhone. You can, but then you sure. probably don't need our help. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, so if somebody um, so there's no part set of the group, team. So if somebody's part of the group and they want to make a film, the best thing to probably do is just reach out and get it posted on the website. Well, the first thing they should do is Come. bring it in to Come the workshop. To the yes. yes. Yeah, they should bring it into the your workshop. Writing. Bring your writing in. Bring mm -hmm. your writing in and have it read and then get people excited about it, including mm -hmm. us, and uh -huh. just start asking for help. And Literally you know what? that. Everyone, you know what? everyone will help everyone you. Everyone will help you. Everyone who you ask will say yes. I promise you. Yep. And not only that, like, if your script, is, if people really get into your script, they will come to you and they will say, "What are your plans with that? How are you going to make yeah. it? And right. how can I help?" Yeah. You know. Yep. So that's what they should do. You're right. Bring it to the workshop. Yeah. Keith Sakura, yeah. who pay them if you can. Keith, yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keith Sakura, who's a um, DP, asks, "Do you have any pending feature projects, and do others in the group?" Yes. It's a great question. Yeah. We, I think we all do, actually. Yeah, I was just going to say, we, I think many of us want to, and so we're doing our best to 
think towards them. Sam has one that's definitely ready to go right now. <laughs> it's not 86, it's... Busted on the 4th. Oh yeah, right? yeah With, which, so was, we, which was uh, busted on the 4th, is that a 4th of July? Yeah. Which is, we did as which a play is, here to develop it. Theater. It's been In workshopped through We Make Movies and it's ready to go right now, but that's the one that we should like make immediately. But um, yeah. we, there are so many different people doing features. Chad's got another script. Yeah. Chad's got one, one that's ready Chad's to go. Chad's got one. Yeah. Smith, I've got a and you guys are doing the fundraiser right now it? to get five new five, shorts made. Five short Sorry. films. Yeah, so we need $4,000 on that still. So if you guys are listening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably less so than $4,000. Before, before we get to the series, features, though, we'll let's get back to Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Forget But yeah, features in the works. We're in the future right now, guys. But. Yes, the goal longer term is to make features for now, shorts, and actually, believe it or not, um, short content, if done correctly, can be profitable on the internet right now. Mm -hmm. So there is, I think that's step one, and then step two is build a presence, like step one is, you know, it's like anything, make a successful short and then make a feature. Prove you can do one and then move up, yep. you know? I, I hope that we're always like a great, like, place to come and develop sections of your feature though because I, I, I think that's something we're all passionate yeah. about and you know we don't even know how many features are being developed through here bec hopefully a lot hopefully yeah. everybody who comes Anybody has who wants some to project bring... that is yep. their dream project or a project they want to sell for fifty thousand dollars or whatever yep so Kyle asked uh, Joe any luck on getting how I got lost sold mm -hmm. yes um, so we uh, we, we got a distribution deal on how I got lost. It was, a, it was a really frustrating and hard process because like film festivals, um, you kind of, you set your sights when you're doing it on Sundance or you set your sights on distribution. Like everybody, which is yeah. a great place to, you, you great for, to exactly. aim for that. Right, so like in my mind, how I got lost, you know, it should be like Sony Pictures Classics, Lionsgate. Of course. They should be knocking on my door. Of course they should. Um, but the reality of, the, of what actually occurs is that you, you find out very quickly that, you know, the, the, the people that you consider to be kind of star level that you've cast, are, don't necessarily help you with, with actually finding the distributor that you want. So, but we did get a really good distributor um, on a much uh, lower level. I should say, there's gotta be a nicer way to say that. No, it's but, um, indie we have, level? We got a much more indie, produ uh, indie distributor who got it up on you know, iTunes and Netflix. That's the way to go. It's, it, it, That's it, smart. We basically, we wanted to do the best we could for our investors and so we got a very fair deal, I think, with our distributor um, on the revenue stream and all of that. Um, and we also knew that they were going to you know, get the DVDs on Amazon, get us on iTunes, get us on Netflix and Hulu, and basically allow for anyone who really wanted to see the movie to be able to see the movie. And Great. so that was, our, that was at least one of our goals that we absolutely got uh, accomplished and we're really excited about. And if there's one thing I, I could really say to filmmakers out there who are watching, listening to this, that you really need to do is buy yourself a copy of this book, Think Outside the Box Office, and read and digest what's in there and start thinking about ways to get people interested in your film before you even make your film. Yeah. Because the more people that are interested and care before you've even shot and the larger the audience that you can build around it, Will help you. Will give you so much more leverage with the distributor, mm -hmm. and in a lot of cases, will help. Will bring them to you as opposed to you having to go find them. So if you're doing anything, start with that book and go from there. Yeah, I think the new model yeah, is basically raise a little bit of money, shoot a good promo, get a Facebook page, get a website, start letting people know about it, like as you're fundraising. Like and as, as you're shooting, as you're, uh, bef like and while you, and while you're shooting, every step post of the way. stuff. It's what every yeah. Post every stuff step. and and don't wait till you're done. Find yeah. your audience like from yeah. the very beginning, um, and it, it it will help. It'll help you in the end, obviously. Yeah. The old model of just you make the movie, and somebody and picks it up is definitely yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not uh, as viable. Um, but yeah. So, uh, so Bree, uh, who we gave a shout out before in the audience, uh, asked, hello, Sam and Joe, can you talk about your experience with finding Terry. legal representation? I think, Terry, you could probably comment on this as well. Legal representation? They can comment more. <laughs> legal, legal representation, <laughs> like a lawyer, like an entertainment lawyer? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, I saw that on Facebook you had it listed with how I got lost. Yeah. 
Huh. We have, well, I mean, there's, there's multiple ways. I mean, actually, the, I don't, I don't the, the entertainment answer. attorney for how I got lost is... Uh, I have, my dad's a lawyer. <laughs> 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 so the, the simple answer is that um, we had my dad do the, all the work, and uh, we're really lucky that I he did that. I can say that, that as a, yeah, oh, go ahead. But within that, um, there are some great people. So come talk to me after, and there are a couple people I can tell you about um, who are fair and cool. But the... Yeah. Um, but for the people listening to the podcast, what's what's a good way to go about finding someone through through relatives and friends and word well, of mouth? Well, and I, when you meet with them, oh, one thing, one test to do with an attorney when you meet with them is ask them how much things are going to cost, and if they can't tell you, <laughs> do not hire them. <laughs> but seriously, they, there's a lot of times right. they there, There's so many good resources actually online for for this stuff, um, and yeah. if you can find someone who's who's just a uh, willing to deal with smaller productions, smaller bu building an LLC, like, and who can give you good advice and set things up correctly for you. Um, it's not that complicated, that stuff. You end up having to pay a little bit for everything, mm -hmm. but you can pay a lawyer just to set up an LLC. You can pay a lawyer you, just to do the clearances, clearance work. Like, it's so specified now that you can literally take whatever you actually need, like, and find the person who just does that the same way that you would need a notary. Like is, is, to, it those, to, so is it one of those things that you could take care of yourself now on websites like LegalZoom.com, or you would you not yes. recommend you, that? You definitely, you definitely can, but there's it's a few hard books. to recommend that. Well there's, a, well, there's a few books you should read, and then actually that'll help you with the process of the lawyer. I mean, there's Pocket Lawyer for Filmmakers, I think, is one. That's a good place to start, because the more you know, the we'll less have, yeah. You know, then there's they have sample. There's Mark Litwack. I think has a bunch of contracts. Or, or is he are we going to have someone on this we, program? We talked about it. Let's yeah. invite that, that next person. Uh, we'll have a lawyer think, on. Because next time is uh, I think what we're going to bring Paul in, who's um, yeah. we make movies. But you guys are right. Like read, read for audience if members at home. Read, read, read. If right? you're super into it and want to spend the time on it, you can learn a lot and probably do most of it yourself. But you may find that you've done it wrong after the fact. So, oh, so, so like ask. that's just disclaimer, <laughs> disclaimer. Ask, yeah. Some research, ask. then get, then talk to your lawyer. It'll cost you less money. Okay. Yeah. So really quickly to wrap up, if someone in the Los Angeles area is listening to this podcast, how can they get involved? Easy. Uh, we have weekly events here at the Theater of the Arts in Hollywood. Go which online. Is, which is right by, right, uh, we have a website. WeMakeMovies.org. WeMakeMovies.org. We make not dot com. Org. Not dot org. Dot we have, org. Exactly. We have an email list. Um, the that right is very easy. Of yeah. the website. Just sign up for the newsletter and that'll give you an idea of what all the events are. We're also, they also get posted to Facebook and Twitter. Um, which is, um, we're on Facebook, we make movies on Facebook or Twitter, it's we make movies with a Z. And then... That's the Twitter, with a yeah, Z. Yeah, we make movies, we make, the regular one was taken. What is it? Um, How do you say that? We make movie, yeah, I can't say it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to say it again. And uh, if you sign up for the newsletter, actually we have a little filmmaker survival guide that comes with it um, that's kind of cool and it's got a bunch of hopefully useful information. So. But every, everything is free, mm -hmm. and basically the best thing to do if you're interested in what we're doing is come by and say hello. And, yeah, come by and, and say hello. And then literally the next time, you, you know, you can email us your script and we'll try and have it read at the next one or the one after that or whatever. Or be we'll, a reader. We, yeah, we'll be a reader. Or, or if you want to be a reader, like we'll try and get you involved right away. That's really so. great for actors. And if you're not in LA, how can listeners benefit and show their support for We Make Movies? Kickstarter. We've got we've got <laughs> Kickstarter campaigns. Which we've, we've, we've hopefully we've make we your own hit we by make now movies. by the time you've seen this. Yeah. No, I, I, I think right. I think there should be a we make movies type thing nice. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I mean, there's no reason that people yeah, you guys need can to make be in Los movie. Angeles to make movies. Um, all we did here was rent a little space and pay a little bit of money to have the space and bought some wine. And like if you all pitched in whole, 20 bucks, you could do it. It's, right. it's really so, not mysterious. It, yeah. so, and yeah. it's a great way to uh, develop your work and develop, and develop relationships that are, that are good work relationships. So, and, 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 actually, and donate money to our Kickstarter campaign as a thank you for this wonderful idea. <laughs> and then, no, thank you guys you. very much for stopping by talking to you tonight. Kickstarter! <laughs> High five. Amanda! High five. Oh, thank you so much, guys. <laughs>